Hey guys, this is Yeshua, yeshuabeuten.com. In this video, I will talk about what the gospel message is or what the gospel of Jesus Christ in the Bible actually is all about. As you can see, I kind of like move from outside to inside now. I'm here sitting on our couch in our living room and I want to talk to all the people that are seeking that maybe started in faith and maybe have heard about Jesus or maybe heard about the gospel and if you have a question about the gospel what the gospel actually is or if you have not yet understood what it actually is then this video is right for you what actually is the gospel for this question we have to go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible and we can see throughout the Bible we can see one red line one main topic that God is talking about that God tries to communicate black and white to us people, to, to us his creation. He's trying to show us that he created us not just to be robots, to just, you know, kind of like worship him and pay the money to the church or whatever. No, he created us for himself. He created us in his image because he wanted someone who can love him back. He wanted someone other than angels that are, you know, worshiping him day and night all the time. They are able to worship but they are not able to love and he wanted someone in his own image able to love him back and yes he wants our worship yes he wants he created us for yeah worshiping him but it's more than that it's relationship that's why he created us that's what we can see in the beginning in the bible with adam and eve he created them and when it says actually in the um, one day he came into the garden and you know in the in the end of the day so so to speak and he's calling for Adam hey where are you where are you and of course sin already happened Adam and Eve had already fallen and you know you can read the story yourself they you know they sinned and the repercussion of this of this the consequence was that God had to separate himself from that sin okay what is sin sin is not keeping God's commandments or breaking his commandments, disobeying God. Now, we have to compare this to a father who tells his child, hey, don't uh, put your hand on the hot furnace or on the hot oven, you know, it it'll burn you. It will give you a boo-boo <laughs> and it'll hurt. The same, you know, guidelines God gives us, yeah, that we wouldn't suffer and struggle because this is what sin does. Everything where God says, don't do this, do that, those guidelines, those commandments, He gives because He loves us and because He wants to protect us. However, because Adam and Eve sinned, He had to separate Himself from them. Because we sinned, we suffer the consequences that God allows and sometimes or oftentimes he himself proclaims. What is the consequence of sin? Well, the consequence of sin is absolute separation of God. I mean, it's, it's huge. Do you actually know what that means? Being eternally separated from God? See, in this life, we can live our life without God and be more or less successful or fine. It's, it's okay. But, um, you know, one day we will all die. One day we will all stand in front of our maker if we believe it or not and we will have to give an account of how we lived our life not as you know have you been a good person or not this is not the question the question is have you loved god with all your heart soul mind and strength and followed let's say his lead or his plan and his guidelines because if you haven't then yes you will be eternally separated from god do you know what that means well, maybe you say, well, you know, I don't care about this life, you know, mm, afterlife, who cares? Man, if you don't accept God in your life, then you will eventually end up in hell and suffer. You will be turned over to Satan, if you believe it or not, and will suffer. Eventually, also Satan and his demons and the people in hell will be turned over and thrown into the lake of fire. This is God's judgment. But man, you don't want to get into Satan's judgment and then later into God's judgment as well. 
man, you want to be on God's side. You want to be on the good side. And yes, I do paint this, this picture black and white. Yes, I do. Because this is, this is the reality that we see in the Bible. This is the reality that I, as I sit here, can witness to. Not because someone told me, not because it's had knowledge, but because I encountered God. And this is my, my next point. Man, there's a way out. There's a way out. I can remember when I was a sinful, let's say real spiritually messed up, hurtful, hateful, angry person. That was the moment where God encountered me and showed me that He loves me. And He showed me that I need to turn and that I have sin in my life and that I have to forgive people. That's the other side. But that I need to turn, that He loves me, yes. But because He loves me, I realized, oops, I'm wrong. Oh my goodness. And because He loves me, I want to love Him because I love Him. I want to turn, not I have to turn, but I want to turn. To what? Jesus Christ, the Father in heaven, sent the best solution for us to get back in a relationship with God, with God the Father in heaven, and that is Jesus Christ. He sent His only begotten Son, His perfect Son, the perfect sacrifice anyone or anything could be to take away the guilt that we have before God. See, a just God, a just judge, will punish sin, will punish what is unlawful. And there must be some kind of justification be made. There must be some kind of price be paid. And this is what Jesus Christ died for. This is what Jesus did. He paid our debt. He took the punishment that was reserved for us. He said, no, I'll take it of all of them. Any sin that ever have, has been there, any sin that will ever be there, He took upon Himself. He became sin. He became the curse so that we are able, just able, just having the chance to say, God, please forgive me. Before Jesus, you had to go to one person, like the Catholic Church still does it, and maybe God forgave you, maybe if you did all these things right. Now, because of Jesus, you're able to pray yourself and ask God for forgiveness. Ask Jesus for forgiveness. But what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, some people would say what I just described in a very long version. <laughs> but I disagree. Because this is only one part of the full gospel, of the real gospel in the Bible. Hey, if you look in your Bible, and if I look in the Bible, I see a Jesus who said, yes, salvation, you need to be saved. But you know what else he said? One day he came into the synagogue, they took out a scroll and they read out of Isaiah. And there it says, and that this is now taken out of Luke, the Gospel of Luke 4.18, where Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he is reading this, because he has anointed me, to preach the gospel to the poor, that is the salvation, that is the good news, yet you can be saved and come into a relationship with God again. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. See, that is the real gospel of Jesus Christ in the Bible. Not just salvation, that's powerful, that is amazing that's able to set you free and set you into a complete different state of mind, state of attitude, state of, of heart and position with God. Absolutely. Amen to that. Like mm, you're a new creation. But you know what? This is just the start because Jesus said he is sent to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for your emotional and my emotional needs. And I'm not talking about desires. I'm talking about like the real issues, like hurts and pains, grudges that you hold, bitterness, abuse. That's what he died for. Not just so that you can say, oh, now I'm a Christian. No, that you would be whole and that you would have peace and freedom, true freedom in your heart. He has come to proclaim liberty to the captives. He has come to tell the captives, the ones that are oppressed, that are bound by addictions, that are bound by sin, that don't see a way out. He has come to tell them there is freedom. 
And he has come to bring recovery of, recovery of sight to the blind. He has not only come to like tell the people about, oh yeah, there's freedom and you can be, you know, be better, a better person in yourself if you do this and that. No, he has come to do it. Back then he demonstrated it. He healed a bunch of people, no matter what they had, they brought them, they brought all these people to him. He healed them all, all sicknesses, all diseases, all demon oppressed. He healed them and delivered them to bring recovery of side. He's a doer. He's not just someone who talks a lot of words, but he's a doer. And then to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That's what I said. He has come to bring deliverance. He's not just someone who talks a lot of talks, but he's, do he's walking the talk. He's talking the walk and walking the talk. And see, the apostles did exactly the same. He sent them out. He said in John 20, 21, he said, As the Father has sent me, I send you. As the Father has sent me to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, you know, preach about it, tell them about, you know, salvation. That's how I send you. He said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Guys, this is, this is the gospel right here. The gospel is not a lot of talking and a lot of, oh yeah, hallelujah, praise, praise God, amen. Part of it, of course, I'm not making fun of it in that way that it's bad. But this is not the gospel. The gospel is, guys, you need salvation. You have a problem with God and you need Jesus. The second thing is, you have a problem, physical problem. Hey, let's pray. I know someone who can heal you. The next thing is, oh, wow, you have an issue in your heart. Like you have an issue to forgive or you have real like, uh, like mental or emotional issues. I know someone who can really help you there because he knows how it feels. He took it upon the cross. You have a problem with addiction. Man, I know someone who can really free you, who can really re release true freedom. Every time, almost every time, I really pray with people that, that want God in their life and that really want to have deliverance. God moves powerfully. After God encountered me with this gospel, with this truth, and not just in words, but in power and in the Holy Spirit of God, man, my life has changed. And since I'm walking this out as much as I can, as much as God gives me the opportunity People are being saved, healed, delivered, restored. And He can do the same for you. He wants to do the same for you. Salvation is just the beginning. It's not being part of a club. God never intended to be the church like a club. God never intended religion. Salvation is the start for healing and deliverance process. Hey, if you are oppressed, if you are struggling, really struggling in your heart, in your life, if you are bound by addiction, maybe, maybe you're bound by emotional pains and struggles. Maybe you don't even know what certain emotions are like. Maybe you don't know what joy is like. Maybe you don't know how to cry. And I'm, I'm not being funny about this. There are people out there that have this need. And I'm talking exactly to those. And I'm talking also to those that, that have never experienced God as, as in, in, you know, having an encounter with him that only know this from head knowledge that maybe grew up in church or grew up in in this church society and churchiness i want to i want to tell you there's more there's more than just words paul and all the apostles preached the gospel not in wisdom of men yes they preached they used their words but they they preached it in the power of god and the holy spirit Meaning, signs, wonders, and miracles were following them. Jesus is real. Salvation is real. Hell is real. Healing is real. Deliverance is real. 
God is real. The supernatural realm with God is real. And He wants to give this to you. He wants to give Himself to you. He's standing there. He's waiting. He kind of like kicks the ball to you now. And He's inviting you to have a relationship with, with Him. But you need to make that step in faith and entrust yourself to Him. You have to open yourself up. Lay everything down in, you know, that you're struggling with or that, that is currently kind of like, like a whirlwind around you. And if you want to know what it is like to be in a relationship with Jesus, hey, you know, just give Him a chance. And I would like to pray and I would like to give this prayer if you want to pray it with me. You can do this right there where you're watching. And if you agree with it, either you can repeat it or you can just say amen to it and agree, agree with it in your heart. However, it needs to come from your heart. God is not l listening to what you speak with your lips. He's listening what comes out of your heart. Let's pray. Jesus, I ask you for forgiveness for my sin. Jesus, I want to give you a chance. I want to get to know you. Jesus, I ask you that you would come into my life and that you would show me what real Father love is, being loved by Father God in heaven. Jesus, if this is true, that you are alive and that you're still doing these signs, wonders and miracles, I ask you that you would right now come into this place and encounter me. God, I want to know you. I want to get to know you. And I give you a chance. I give you my life here completely right now. I humbly surrender to you, God, right now. And I ask you that you would bring true freedom and ex let me experience true freedom and deliverance and healing in my life. In Jesus name. Amen. If you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a thumbs up or uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell button next to it so you're notified if there is a new uh, video. I hope this blessed you and helps you grow in faith, experience the gospel and walk it out daily. See you next time.